Colleagues, I just want um, to acknowledge what happened today in Texas and what also happened in Buffalo. And I remember my first three weeks as a supervisor here at the Board of Supervisors, the Parkland Element or high school shooting happened where 17 people were killed and we read the names and we have yet to read the names of those who were slaughtered in a grocery store in Buffalo. And that's Roberta Drury, age 32, Margus Morrison, 52, Andre McNeil, 53, Aaron Soler, 55, Geraldine Talley, age 62, Celestine Cheney, 65, Hayward Pattison, 67, Catherine Massey, 72, Pearl Young, 77, Ruth Whitfield, 86. When you look at what's happened over the last 10 days in this country, Buffalo, Laguna Woods Church, Chicago, and now an elementary school in Texas, 58 humans dead or injured in heinous acts of totally preventable violence in the last 10 days. And there's so many more that are unnamed and unheard of and not in the news, yet they happen in this country every single day. What does it say about us that we continue to allow our leadership to sit by at the federal level while children are slaughtered in their classrooms, or African-American communities slaughtered as they're going shopping. The Second Amendment is not a suicide pact, and we can end this vicious cycle and live free of gun violence. We are failing entire generations through our inaction, and I know we do a lot here in San Francisco, but we have to demand a lot more is done at the federal level. Now is the time to pass the laws that we know will prevent these unbelievable tragedies. We know that the people are on our side. We know that a majority of Americans want background checks on all gun sales. We know that the majority of Americans believe in red flag laws. We know the majority of Americans want an end to this. And yet the NRA and the politicians that they've bought and paid for stand in the way and continue to fail this country, our children, and future generations. I cannot believe how many times I have read things at this board regarding gun violence. I have been shaken to my core once again, as Supervisor Melgar saw on our way here, as I was when I heard about the Buffalo shooting, and I will not stay silent. I will not sit here and shake and be sad and be fearful. I will continue to push back and demand change, and I know all of you will do that with me because I know it is something that we all agree on. We have to demand better. To think that it can't happen in San Francisco, you're absolutely wrong. It can happen here. We are only as safe as the weakest gun laws in the next state over, as we saw in the Gilroy Garlic shooting, Garlic, the Gilroy Garlic Festival shooting, where a little boy was bouncing in a bouncy house, six years old, and was shot. It has to stop. Anyway, I did not want to let this moment go by without saying something and acknowledging the horror, once again, of what has been inflicted upon this country, those parents that are finding out two days before school has ended that their kids won't be home. It just makes me sick. Again, I want to thank all my colleagues here and everyone for always demanding more and for always pushing more on this horrible, horrible issue that we continue to face. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Stephanie. Supervisor